Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cleveland International Film Festival Film Slam Streams Pulse Film Conversation for the Blue Cape. My name is Eric Seiler, Professor of Communication, Film, and Media Arts, as well as moderator for this conversation. I am very thrilled to be joined by our special guest, Alejandra Lopez. Alejandra wrote and directed the, short, the film short, The Blue Cape. It has screened at many places, including the Palm Springs International Short Film Festival, the Uppsala International Short Film Festival, the International Short Film Festival of Berlin, Aspen Short Film Festival, Short Fest, and many others, and was acknowledged as an honorable mention category for best live action at the Cleveland International Film Festival. She was also the grand prize winner of Voices Nubas, and she can correct me on that pronunciation, a Cine Sony and NALIP short film contest. Alejandro was most recently a staff writer on the third season of Sony's Crackle slash Amazon series Startup. Originally from Puerto Rico, Alejandro is now based in Los Angeles, uh, but today she's joining us for Puerto Rico. Alejandro, hello and welcome to Film Slam Streams. Hi, Eric. I'm excited to jump on board. You know, happy to be here. Oh, great. Great. So you're in Puerto Rico right now? I am. I am. Okay, great. I'm so glad that you can um, join us um, from um, a territory of the United States, not quite in a country, but still close enough um, to us as well. So we're, we're going to get started. We have a number of, um, of people joining us uh, who have seen your short, The Blue Cape. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about what inspired you to make this film it's so powerful? So many things you put into that film in such a short amount of time. Well, uh, first of all, thank you everyone that's tuned in for watching. That means a lot to me. The Blue Cave, well, you know, I was in LA when the hurricane happened and then I came over, I came home for Christmas and I felt a need to help. So basically on my way to do community service, I just kept seeing Puerto Rico's, you know, houses uh, covered with blue tarps. And for some reason, you know, we don't know how, how our brain works, but I just remembered, you know, uh, my little brother just kept his Spider-Man costume all the time when we were kids and we went through a hurricane when we had no power and water. And I guess, you know, the superhero with the blue tarps kind of merged and the blue cape was born. I see. Okay. So the blue cape was born, but you have to kind of tell a story about it. And there's some metaphors in there. And uh, so this is like, we want the director's secret. Like, okay, <laughs> what were you thinking? You know, how are you using the characters to tell the story? So give us the um, director's well, cut. I, you know, I, I guess when it, when any type of disasters happen, we, we humans feel very vulnerable. And I think the character that represents that the best is a, show, is a, um, a kid, a child, which is the reason why I want to tell the story through his eyes. And if we want to go really, really deep, you know, um, for all of you who, you know, may not know or do know, well, Puerto Rico is, is um, Commonwealth of the U.S. Um, so when the disaster happened, uh, the federal government, meaning the United States, gave us blue tarps, you know, to help us around. But unfortunately, that was all that was giving to us, you know, so for a moment, I, I decided to make a cape out of the tarp because we felt important. We felt like superheroes. We felt that we will be okay. But unfortunately, that was all that was that was giving to us as a help. And at the end, you know, we just used the tarps to um, to literally, you know, just covered our debts, you know. And I think that that's what the blue cape stands for. You know, that's the metaphor of it. Oh well, and okay, well put, well put. Thank you for sharing that um, with us. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, the characters in the film, the boy. Um, is this someone that you knew? Did you have a casting call? How did you actually get your cast for this film? I did have a casting director. She's great. And, you know, as a director, I've always preferred in this case, you know, more than an actor, I wanted a, a child that went through this, you know, and Janiel, which is the protagonist's name, he's literally from, I guess, what you can consider the slums of Puerto Rico. So she, he unfortunately went through this experience himself. So, you know, the mid, I only cast it to children, to be honest, you know, the casting director knew what I wanted and she reduced it very little, which is better for me because less work. 
And the minute I saw Daniel in the audition, I just knew he was the one. You know, that that God, that sixth sense that we artists have. And I'm 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 blessed to have him because I don't think the short film would have worked without him. Yes, he he was amazing. He he really got it. He understood what he had had to do um, um, to make that um, film um, work um, uh, with that. And um, in, in, in terms of um, actually shooting the film, I mean, I, I love the like the single camera kind of look. And um, you had a couple of um, like long shots. Did you use a drone for that, or did you? We did. Okay, great. Yeah, especially at the end and. Um, him um, walking along the hillside. And that was actually, sh this was actually shot in Puerto Rico? Everything, yes. Everything in Puerto Rico, that's what I thought. Um, as most directors, you know, you shoot a lot and there's some things that you can't fit in there or couldn't fit in there. Are there, are there any like scenes or any parts of the, some things that you shot that you did not include in the film that you could tell us about? Uh you know, um, I'm the contrary, because I also wrote the script, so I knew very clear what I wanted from, you know, the inception of, of the little movie. So I literally just, and I even knew how I was going to shoot it. So what you saw was what we shot. <laughs> okay. Oh, great. Great. A oh, well-planned out. And uh, the young boy, how, how old was the young boy in the film? Ten. Ten. Okay, great. He... Um, did a, a great job, especially the scene when he's at the counter and he had to think fast to, you know, <laughs> find a, a relative to buy the insulin. And he just like really got, I really, we knew he was going to figure out a way because he had that cape on and we right. just, just knew that it was going to actually um, happen. Um, how did he receive the film and how did the others in the cast and people in general receive the film? Um, you know, uh, the main reason I wanted to do that movie was because there were just, you know, so many fake news on the air. People didn't really knew what was happening. I, and I asked the filmmaker, the only thing I really know is how to tell a story. So that's what I did. So when, you know, it premiered here in Puerto Rico, and obviously by the end of the short, everybody was crying. <laughs> you know, they finally saw themselves reflect, reflected on the big screen, which is why it's very important, you know, uh, about representation and uh, people were just blown away by it, you know, and once we started moving around the world, you know, they, was, they were just so amazed how I, you know, how we managed to tell a story in so little time, you know, and, and, my, and I think what's most important is that there's a very thin line between drama and melodrama, but I, I think we managed to keep it real, you know, for people to believe that this actually happened. Exactly. So it was, it served as a purpose to, um, I guess reflect on for people to reflect on their lives in Puerto Rico and also maybe a healing in some type of way as well. And the people around the world knew what really happened. You know, over four thousand Puerto Ricans died of and but this is why they died, you know. Exactly. Is. Um uh one thing that you said people were crying at the end. I think one thing that add to um the tears at the end was that song. It was a I, um, can you tell us a little bit about the song? Was it an original song or is it um, a well-known song? No, well, it's, I think it's a song like maybe from the 30s or 40s. It's mm -hmm. typical uh, Puerto Rican folk, folklore music. Okay. And I don't know if, you know, you guys could tell, but I hope it was the, ki the kid singing, you know, to his grandfather, which also singing to Puerto Rico. And I decided to make it a cappella because I think, you know, um, we, I mean, it's, it's such a somber scene, why music, I don't, again, I, I didn't want to push the audience feelings, you know, I just want him, I just, I, I, I just thought rather than screaming, I have had him sing, you know, so we, he could express his pain. So that right. was, that was the idea behind the music. Yeah, it was nicely placed in, in the, in the film and nice way to, um, tie everything together. Um, as a filmmaker, there's always things you want to do differently. When you're watching a film back with other people, there's that scene that comes up or part that comes up which you like cringe and shit like, oh, <laughs> I wish I could do that differently or over again. Did you get that feeling in this film? Is there something that you would do differently? Um, I mean, the only thing that I kept bumping was like, how, how, how would he use his cape at the end? You know, could he just, placed it over the body could he actually use it to wrap the body 
you know, like um, at the end, we were struggling with the wind. So it wasn't something that he could just place because if he could just place it, then the cape would just leave, <laughs> which happened in multiple takes. So, but I think what we have, you know, it, it, it still works. But yeah, I would, I would definitely think about the ending a little bit more. But that's, okay. that's about it. Okay, but it's, it still worked out anyway. Yeah, so. <laughs> hopefully. It, it, exactly. Um, this film is obviously on the film festival circuit. Um, what other plans do you have on in terms of um, exhibiting the film or dis distributing the film? Well, I, be I mean, it's, it, it has had quite a life, to be honest. You know, I think I'm almost two years, maybe next year for mm -hmm. the festival circuit. And I think the one very important uh, festival that for me as a Latina is Guadalajara Film Festival, which is the biggest Latin America film festival in the world. And that's in November. It's going to be November. So I can't make it public yet because of that festival. But after that, I'm pretty sure I'm ready for the world to see. Okay, great, great. And um, the world will be in, certainly in for a treat once they see your film. <laughs> um, well, what's next for you? Are you working on a project right now? You, you're back in Puerto Rico. Are you there to do a film or what's going on with you now? Well, I leave uh, to LA on Saturday. I'm working on, a, on another project, but personally, you know, short, I, I did uh, feel this short film helped me gain everything that I wanted out of a short film, you know, cause filmmakers can't just base a career out of shorts. So honestly, Eric, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, um, I mean, I'm writing a feature and a pilot, you know, so I'm ready for the next step. I feel confident. So well, great. Well, well, wonderful. <laughs> and, um, yeah, this, the, what you're working on now, is this something um, for the um, uh, Hispanic community? Are you writing it in Spanish as well too? So you're very dedicated to uplifting the Hispanic community in your work. Yeah, because it's the only stories yeah. I know I can tell, honestly, you know, and if there are many of us in the US, then why not, you know, let us raise our voice a little bit. So I only hope to be a grain of sand you know, in this movement. So generations after me may have it a little bit easier. That's what I only hope. Well, great, that's, that's wonderful. In terms of um, um, getting your inspiration for your work, are there any particular filmmakers, any type of books or films or anything that you draw inspiration from? Or do you just draw inspiration from life situations to create your work? I, I believe so because in my case, I didn't go to film school. You know, I'm, I've, I'm from the streets, I guess, you know, <laughs> uh, life has been my school. So again, you know, I, because I am, or maybe I'm not part of the US, I'm heavily influenced by the Eastern European cinema. You know, it's something that I have taught myself, uh, especially from Poland and Turkey. I think they, great, they make great cinema. And yes, I obviously, I've, I've read a lot of books. I've watched a lot of movies, but you know, what, what inspires me? It's just, it's a spark that you feel like I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I can't look for it. It, it looks for me, you know, <laughs> what is an artist's brain, right? How does it work? I don't know, but I'm grateful that it comes. <laughs> and when it does, I grab it, you know. I, I like the way you put that. It looks for you. So it's a matter of being prepared and, um, looking at an opportunity and taking Just embrace it, on. it I do travel a lot, Eric. You know, I, I, I do see myself more than a storyteller, a story seeker, you know, so I, I embrace everything because you never know when you're going to find your next source of inspiration. It's, exactly. And traveling certainly can do that. Traveling is <laughs> like one of the best way to, ways to educate yourself. Yes. Um, so that's great. Um, let's talk about, um, you've done some other work. I know you, you worked as a writer on the um, uh, series um, Startup um, with Amazon. Tell us um, how you got into that and what that experience was, was like working on that show. Well, um, you know, I'm proud to say that I, I climbed the ladder. You know, I started as a PA, which is a production assistant, which is the lowest position you can have in the film business. I did that for three years. After that, I started assisting, you know, writers and directors, you know, I was getting closer to what I wanted, which is a filmmaker. And on startup, they shot in Puerto Rico, you know, so I got hired to assist the director. And then by the end of season one, he goes like, man, Alejandro, it'd be great if you could just come to LA with me and keep assisting me in post. And I'm like, 
booking flight. Are you kidding me? You know, obviously I talked to my parents, you know, and I'm very, you know, blessed that God has guided me all this way. And, you know, once we got there on season two, he bumped me to writer's assistant. And then by season three, I got a script, you know, so I, I, it, it still, I feel very, you know, proud and blessed to say that I, 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 you know, there are, they're just, everybody has different journeys, you know, but I, I'm, I'm just blessed that I did it the right way. And I, and I'm, 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 you know, I paid my dues to be here. So that's, that's my little, you know, backstory. <laughs> Oh, great. Uh, that's how a lot of people get started um, in, in working in the business. Um, the plus, exactly. Now, there are a lot of, um, quite a few students who are watching this now who may watch this later. Um, what advice would you give to someone who wants to perhaps make a short or has, you know, an idea about expressing themselves through art, through film? Well, I do believe if, if God has placed that passion in you because you were meant to do that, so you should achieve it any way possible. And for example, I started with friends, you know, I knew someone that had a camera. I write my own stories. You know, I had this friend that was maybe was not an actor, but he was funny and he was happy to be in the film, you know, just and right now we have well, there are so many also resources, you know, we have our phones with us at all times, you know, so just just get out there and do it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what people might say because they will, they're always going to say something, you know, just, just, I will say, just do it. Just, just do it. Cause if you have that passion, it means you are talented, you know, and, and you are going to succeed. Just don't be afraid. Just trust in yourself and do it. Just go out there because mm -hmm. opportunities are not going to knock your door. Like I said, you have to find them. That's, that's good advice. You have to definitely um, find them. Um, with that. And um, you certainly um, have um, made a lot of the opportunities and you have more opportunities coming up um, in the future as well, too. Um, before I'm going to turn it, I'm going to, um, we're going to get some questions for the stu from the students in a moment. So um, please um, put that. I just want to encourage the um, students who are watching and please put your questions in the chat so we can get to them. But before we um, get to that, um, in, in terms of um, uh, like your um, style all directors have like a style in which they want to express themselves and um, you seem to be very passionate and want to connect with your um, heritage in a sense and um, your culture in that sense what kind of style would you say you have would you, would you say you have more of a, um, a dramatic kind of style i know it's not comedic or is it historical uh, what kind of style do you have in terms of like expressing yourself through art? I'm going to say political drama, mm. if, I'm, if I'm being honest. Okay. Because again, I, I'm, I'm going to express what, I've, what, what I can only know, you know, what has affected me throughout my life. And I would, I would, I think that would be my genre, political drama. Political drama. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. Not too, uh, interesting. Um, are you influenced by politics in any particular way from, you know, in Puerto Rico or the United States, a combination of both or without getting too political? Yeah, I think both because again, you know, you, you, as a grown up, you, you, for example, you know, I'm not independent, but you were not a state, you know, so it's only few countries in the world can say they're a colony. So it, it has definitely affected who I am as a person. For example, we speak Spanish, I eat rice and beans, but then everything that I see on my TV is American, you know? So it's, it, I, it's, it's very confusing, but yet again, you know, maybe that's why I also can, I'm able to speak English, you know, maybe that's why I'm able to travel to the United States. It's a very, very complicated issue, but as a grown up, I can see basically how the political status of my island has affected me as a person. And that's how, what I want to express through my, you know, movies, I guess. Oh, great. That, that's very, very important to do that. I'm glad that you are doing that. So I'm going to uh, look in a Q&A to see if we have any questions. And, um, and we have one question and one person wants to know, how did the length of the film enable you to get your point across? Good question. 
Well, basically, you know, I just kept in my mind, you know how people always say, just give me five minutes, just give me five minutes, you know? So I always knew five minutes was the right number because I wanted to address a subject very quickly. You know, um, if I could just only have five minutes of your time, I know I can change your point of view. So that's why I've always managed to tell a story uh, very short. Again, it is a short film. You know, right. but that's the reason why I decided to keep it five minutes. Right, and I thought the length was um, quite appropriate. You got your point across. And uh, there's some films, as you know, that are a lot longer and still can express the same point. And you walk away feeling that, okay, I got the point, but it could have been expressed in a shorter way. Um, I'm gonna encourage our um, uh, viewers to still put questions in the chat. Um, and uh, I'll get to your questions as they um, pop up in the chat I'm looking here. And while people are, I'm giving people time to type on um, questions into the chat. Um, a little bit about um, Puerto Rico. Um, I'm not sure how many people watch it have been to Puerto Rico. I've been to Puerto Rico a couple of times. I really, it's a beautiful country. Um, can you give um, people watching a sense of the country, of the colony of Puerto Rico? and? how it is and what it's like um, actually being there? It's hot. <laughs> um, but, you, I mean, it's a tropical island. You know, you're going to see a lot of greens, a lot of blue. The air is fresh. The people are warm. Um, you know, you might see a lot of, you know, Walmarts and McDonald's. <laughs> but other than that, we have great authentic food. We have great salsa clubs. You know, I guess it's, 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 it's anything you expect to be out of the Caribbean, you know, it's, it's, and if you haven't, um, I, I know you're going to have a blast, so. Okay. <laughs> oh, great, great. Okay, que questions are popping in now. Uh, next question is, um, there were many blue objects in the film. What was the symbolism there? Smart. All right. Yes. Okay, so basically the blue, so we have three uh, political parties in Puerto Rico. Um, you know, one is based, and they're all based on status, meaning if we want statehood is blue, if we want to keep being a colony is red, and if we want to um, be independent, it's green. Uh, Oh, wait, you froze. Can you hear me, Eric? Uh, I'm here. I'm okay, here. never mind. Then I'll just We're keep here. talking. <laughs> you know, so I just wanted to give little elements of, of uh, I mean, again, it's called the blue cape, you know, and, and also blue means sadness. So I kind of was foreshadowing what was going to happen at the end in that sense and um again i dressed the blue i, I dressed the, the boy in a blue cape and red uh uh pants because those were the colors those are the colors basically that represent the american and the puerto rican flag as well so my answer is there are a lot of hidden secrets throughout the the film you know there's not only one reason why it's blue but i'm happy that you guys caught it because i yes i did it on purpose <laughs> Okay, great, great. I'm glad they um, picked up on that. The next yeah. question, the next question we have is, um, who is your film, favorite filmmaker and why? I don't know if many people have heard, but he's from Poland. He's Krzysztof Kowalski. <laughs> um, he's a filmmaker that rarely use words. You know, he really does convey what he wants to do just with the power of images. And I think he's the topic that he picks are very similar to mine. And, you know, again, this is, this is the beauty of, of art, you know, it's, it's made around the world. So it's, and now we have, you know, so many technology, please feel free to dive in and watch other cultures, movies, you're going to get very enriched and very inspired, but that's, that's my favorite filmmaker. Oh, great. Great. That's very good. Very good. Um, for those of you who are watching us live, um, we're going to be wrapping up in a couple moments and I'll give you a chance to ask a, a couple more questions. Um, as we um, draw to a close, uh, what's the one thing that you want um, 
if people had to just take one thing away from this film, just like you told this in five minutes, and um, someone has to say, hey, I saw this short film, and they explain it, how would you want them to explain it like in like a quick elevator thing? Hey, you have to check out the blue cake. It is about what? The blue cape is about what matters in life. I would say, you know, simple things like health, simple things like family, you know, simple things like happiness. You know, those are essential things that are free for all of us. And sometimes we get so wrapped up in life that it's not only when something bad happens that we realize how truly blessed we are. And I feel it's very relevant to what's happening now as well. You know, so just take that, you know, what are the important things that make you happy in life? And if you have them, then consider yourself very blessed. Good, good. Great way to sum it up. Great way to sum it up. Well, um, Alejandra, I just can't thank you enough for, first of all, making the film. And second of all, joining us today. If it wasn't for your film, you wouldn't be with us today. And I really, really appreciate your time. And I wish you all the best in your career and hopefully we'll be talking to you again for, you know, your next, your next project and your next project and so forth. So thank you very much. And I want to um, thank us. You're quite welcome. <laughs> and I want to thank our um, special student audience for joining us as well for this invigorating and important conversation. For more information about the upcoming 45th Cleveland International Film Festival, please continue to follow CIFF on social media and visit clevelandfilm.org. Also, if you'd like to support the Art for Justice, you can do so at artsforjustice.org. And if you'd like to support CIFF, please visit clevelandfilm.org slash donate. I'm Eric Seiler, thank you. Thank you.